We are back in 1984, continuing our look at the Masters of the Universe toy line by Mattel. Last time we took a look at the heroic human periscope, Mechanek, He-Man's trusted spy. Today we're going back over to Skeletor's minions to check out the warrior with the grip of evil, Clawful, here on Creed's Collection. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Creed's Collection. My name's Creed, and today we're taking a look at the evil Clawful from the 1984 Masters of the Universe toy line by Mattel. Clawful first appears in Season 1 of the Masters of the Universe cartoon in the episode Driel's Return. And while he looks quite different, his personality and role as Skeletor's right hand and most trusted henchman are consistent with most early renditions of Clawful. Not only does Skeletor think highly of him, he also treats him with more respect than his other lackeys. But Clawful earns this treatment as one of the most loyal and capable of Skeletor's followers. And now that we know a bit more about Clawful, let's take a closer look. One thing about Masters of the Universe figures that really stands out to me is how essentially it's the same figure over and over, just with a different head, coloring, accessories, and armor. And somehow, all the figures seem incredibly unique, just like Clawful here. His head sculpt and the way his teeth are make me think of a dinosaur, but man, his armor is fantastic. All the detailing here in between these darker portions, it looks really cool. On the cartoon, all of Clawful's skin was red, but for the toy, they went with some of this tan-colored skin, and I have to say that I like the look of the action figure quite a bit better. The cartoon also didn't have this giant claw hand. I mean, look at this thing. It's magnificent. The sculpt work here is really great as it goes down into the main part of the claw. And it is spring-loaded. There's a switch right here, so you grab it on the bottom, and it actually will snap closed pretty nicely, even though it's in no danger of actually hurting you. Here's a look at the details on the other side, and you can see they extend all the way down into the skin of his arm. His one giant claw really stands out, and sometimes I wonder if Clawful's a bit self-conscious about it. You know, I've been thinking a lot about changing my name. What? But why? Well, the only thing people ever notice about me is my giant claw, and the name Clawful really draws attention to it. You want to take attention away from your claw? It's kind of your thing, but... Okay, how about you just start throwing things at people on the battlefield? How does throwing things at people on the battlefield help with my name? Because then we could call you Lobstore. Get it? Lobstore. Because you throw things. And? And also because you have a giant claw. There it is. <laughs> you also have one tiny claw too, Clawful. And while it may not be articulated like the big one, it's still sculpted really nicely and it does hold his weapon. Also, here on his forearm, he has these ridges that are really cool looking and add a lot to him. Those continue down into his legs, as you can see. They're down his thigh and also down the side of his calf as well. He's also got these great three-toed giant feet down here. And all in all, these legs look fantastic. The ridging going down into the three-toed monster feet, that's awesome. There's some fun details here on the back of Clawful on his head and armor, and we'll take a closer look at those right now. Basically, he's got these spikes that run down the back, and then they go back into his spine. And I have to say, I love that these continue into the back of his armor. It's a nice touch and excellent detailing. Also, he's got this armor that snaps together that they came out with later. It's two pieces that pop on, and while it looks good, I don't like taking this armor off because I'm always afraid it'll break. Now we're going to take a look at Clawful's one included accessory. This is his club or mace, which is definitely a weird color being this bright green. And right here, this is actually not a guard. This is the handle. You actually slip this over his tiny claw so he can hold it. So basically, it just kind of pops on over his hand like that. He technically doesn't hold on to it. It more just kind of sticks on there. Of course, you can put it in his giant claw as well, but it looks kind of awkward. All right, now we're going to take a look at Clawful's articulation. So here at the hips, they do have the rubber band legs, and sadly, mine are pretty shot. I'll probably have to replace that rubber band soon. Now here at the waist, he does have the spring-loaded mechanism for the power punch, which we'll look at here in a bit. Shoulders can go up and all the way around full 360 if you want. Now his claw also has an additional articulation right there. 
head can turn left and right. And that's it. That covers all seven points of articulation for Clawful. Now we're going to check out Clawful's spring-loaded power punch with his giant claw. Oh, Zodak's about to get it. Boom! Oh my goodness. Let's see that in super slow motion. Wham! Oh, that giant claw doing work. I'm pretty sure Clawful's copyright date is beneath his armor on his lower back, but I'm afraid to take it off because I don't want to break it. But there is a Hong Kong stamp on the back of his armor. And now for our He-Man size comparison. As you can see, Clawful and He-Man are exactly the same size. And that's because essentially, like I said earlier, they are the same figure. And yet, look how different they are. While they didn't originate the idea of different heads and accessories on the same body, they certainly did a fantastic job with it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my toy retrospective for Clawful from the 1984 Masters of the Universe toy line by Mattel. Sadly, Clawful was one of the last Masters figures I collected as a child, as by 1984, I was full tilt into Transformers and G.I. Joe. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a thumbs up, and if you have any thoughts, please leave a comment. I love reading and responding to them. And while you're at it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it, and it would help my channel grow. I do a retrospective on a toy from my vintage collection every Wednesday, so hope to see you next week and every week after, here on Creed's Collection.